Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. President Gotabaya Rajapakshe has made it clear that Sri Lanka's uh, strategic security policy will have an India-first approach, though Colombo remains open to dealing with other key players for economic development, the country's new foreign secretary, Jayanath Kolombage, has said. Kolombage, a retired admiral who commanded Sri Lanka's navy during 2012 to 14 and is perceived as close to Rajapaksha, made the remarks in two interviews to the media. He also said Rajapaksha's administration has adopted a posture of neutrality in its dealings with key powers at the regional and global level as Sri Lanka cannot become a staging area for any country to do anything against another country, especially India. India has focused on improving ties with Rajapaksha's administration. Prime Minister Modi was the first world leader to congratulate Rajapaksha even before the final results of Sri Lanka's parliamentary elections were declared in August after his SLPP party took an unassailable lead. In this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze Sri Lanka's India First policy. Joining me on the program today are Alok Bansal, Director, India Foundation, Prabhu Dayal, former ambassador, and Rajesh Sundaram, journalist and author. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador, I'd like to begin the program with you first. Let's try and understand this new India first policy as far as Sri Lanka is concerned. You know, what do you make of the statements that have come out of Sri Lanka over the last uh, past week or so? Well, Frank, at the outset, I would like to categorically state that what I make out of these statements is that they vindicate Prime Minister Modi's neighborhood policy in general and his policy towards Sri Lanka in particular. Now, there had been a lot of justified concern in India about the growing closeness between China and Sri Lanka, particularly after the previous Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe had leased Hambantota port to the Chinese for 99 years. Therefore, Prime Minister Modi's government has carefully focused on improving ties with President Rajapaksa's administration and has taken very meaningful steps in this regard. Uh, it would be recalled that uh, President Rajapaksa visited India in November uh, last year, just 10 days after becoming president. Now, during the visit, India had announced $400 million as a line of credit to boost infrastructure and development and also offered another $50 million to fight terrorism and enhance intelligence gathering. Now, you just now mentioned, and this is significant, that Prime Minister Modi was the first world leader to congratulate Raja Paksa for his party's victory in the parliamentary polls earlier this month. Last month, India had announced $400 million as currency swap facility for Sri Lanka under the SARC framework and also said that Colombo's request for a bilateral swap facility for $1.1 billion was being considered. So, as I said earlier, it's a vindication of Prime Minister's neighborhood policy and particularly his policy towards Sri Lanka. Very significantly, the uh, Sri Lankan Foreign Secretary in his press uh, briefings and his TV interview addressed India's concerns about Hambantota port, which was given by the previous government. He said to China for 99 years, and he said that Hambantota had been a mistake. He said that, as you pointed out, President Rajapaksa's administration had adopted a posture of neutrality in its dealing with key powers at the regional and global level. Because he said Sri Lanka cannot become a staging area for any country to do anything against another country, especially India. So these remarks of it his make very good sense, particularly if uh, the uh, present administration in Sri Lanka, the present government, is to undo the damage done by the previous government. I would also like to point out that while addressing India's security concerns, he said that Sri Lanka cannot depend on any one country for economic development. He said we are open to anyone. And he said that China is one country which is willing to invest and develop. They have the capacity to do it. And he said we have to benefit from it. We have to balance. 
So in a nutshell, what the Sri Lankan Foreign Secretary has said that his country's strategic policy will have an India first approach, though Colombo would remain open to dealing with other key players for economic development. This is how I would take it and this is my initial reaction. Okay, all right. Uh, Alok Bansal, let me bring you to the picture now. You know, the ambassador has very uh, beautifully elaborated how things have changed since November of 2019 to August of 2020 and what India has done and how India has helped Sri Lanka as well. But, you know, if you go back in history, when, uh, you know, Mahinda Rajapakshi was the president, we saw that, you know, Sri Lanka had taken a very firm pro-China stand what has led to the change? Is there something that Sri Lanka has realized over these few past years? I think uh, it's prudent to go back into history and have a look. We need to understand that Mahinda Rajapaksha's victory over LTT was primarily facilitated with India's cooperation. But uh, after promising 13th Amendment plus during the war, uh, after the war, obviously, he went back and he felt that his reliance on India had probably reduced. And that is when we started seeing a far more autocratic tendencies at that point of time. And I think uh, the transformation from Mahindra Rajapaksha presidency to Maitripala Sirisena was primarily facilitated because of India's uh, uh, cajoling, bringing the diverse political groups together. And I think after that, what Sri Lanka has realized, which of course uh, even Mahinda had realized earlier, that as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, India will always be the first. And in fact, Mahinda had earlier said that India is a relative, whereas China is a friend. And in South Asian context, relatives are for keeps. Friends may come and go. Please understand that. So that has been the case. Now, having said that, when this government came to power, initially when Gotabaya Rajapaksha won the election, there were some concerns because the previous government was seen as very pro-India. In fact, uh, because India had a role in bringing that government to power probably. So I think after that, government of India has moved very fast. And I think uh, we have mended bridges with both Gotabaya as well as Mahinda Rajapaksha. Yesterday, I think Indian High Commissioner hosted a dinner where 19 cabinet ministers attended, which by itself, including two members of the uh, Rajapaksha family, Namal and Cham, uh, which is a phenomenal thing. And what we need to understand is, as far as the Foreign Secretary, Admiral Jainath Kolambuge is concerned, we have had the good fortune of hosting him two or three times in our foundation for our events. In fact, a former naval officer like me, uh, he, has, uh, he has a very, very practical understanding of what the security scenario is. And please understand, as far as India and Sri Lanka is concerned, our defense cooperation and cooperation has been far greater than the cooperation at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs level. Because please understand, the civil war would not have been won without an active cooperation with the security forces of the two countries. So anybody who is a naval officer, who is a defense officer, has had phenomenal interaction with Indian security forces. Like Admiral Columbia itself, he has actually done a lot of his training in India, has been coming to India off and on, has a very, very close relationship with Indian uh, authorities, Indian uh, people, and of course is extremely close to President Gotabaya Rajapaksha, who was uh, Defense Secretary when uh, the Civil War was going on and a very, very powerful man. And uh, we have, he also has very good equation with Admiral Columbage who was that time the chief of uh, the Navy, Sri Lankan Navy. So there is a good equation when uh, Admiral Columbage said that India first, he meant it. And subsequently, what we have seen is this dinner diplomacy. We have seen Indian Army and Sri Lankan Army have had a webinar. We have had communications. So we are going to have a communication. But please understand, Sri Lanka is a sovereign country. It has uh, every right to pursue its economic growth by getting assistance from different countries. And China at this point of time is flush with funds. Let's be, let's be frank that the largest foreign exchange reserves at this point of time in the world are held by People's Republic of China. So their mm -hmm. capacity to invest is phenomenal. And uh, so that's where it is. So China would probably invest, but as they have made it very clear that nothing that China does would have an adversarial impact on India's security and India's national interest. So that is what we need to understand. And I think this is, from our point of view, an excellent thing. Uh, we and Sri Lanka, uh, India and Sri Lanka have had very good relations in the past. 
and we would like to continue it because even today please understand the uh, before the pandemic hit the largest number of tourists visiting sri lanka were indians mm. sri lankans of every ethnicity every religion come to india for pilgrimage education medical facilities so right. india and uh, sri lanka tries of course uh, are so old that they actually disappear into the mists of history as professor g l paris the former foreign minister had once said so we have a very very extremely close relationship and i think uh, uh, these statements emanating from colombo are extremely reassuring to the indian government and indian people that the close relationship the close bonds that we have shared will continue this process will continue in days to come okay all right that's a good thing and of course it is indeed uh, really reassuring as far as we are concerned and as far as uh, you know the the subcontinent is concerned it's good to see india and sri lanka now putting aside differences and looking ahead and trying to deal with the you know all of these uh, issues together all right uh, so uh, rajesh sundaram let me come across to you now and uh, let's talk about another aspect do you believe at some level the indian community and uh, the uh, you know persons of indian origin too have had some kind of an impact in bringing uh, the rajapaksha administration and the modi administration closer together well the rajpakse family and the rajpakse brothers aren't really uh, allies for india in any sense you know historically we know uh, which political party has been uh, you know more uh, uh, favoring towards the chinese and which ones have helped the indians of course this is the honeymoon period they're making a lot of noises which are very uh, reassuring uh, it is a country which has been hit uh, by the pandemic the economy has taken a hit and uh, clearly they would want indian money as much as they would want the chinese money and uh, like the panelists before me said uh, china has more money to offer uh, has more uh, infrastructural help uh, to offer at this time and it's really very early days uh, to see what it is uh, if you see, see the last time the rajapaksas were in power they had india in a very anxious uh, situation you had uh, chinese uh, uh, navy ships who were uh, in their waters you had the haban tota port which was given out on these they've learned a few lessons but not nothing that is coming out of the policy makers right now gives us any reason uh, to be reassured they say that the sri lankans going forward will keep 51% equity uh, in whatever new strategic uh, 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 ventures that come about but is that reassuring from for, for india <laughs> absolutely not because if you have a 49% stake uh, held by a chinese company in a strategic installation in, in sri lanka that is no reason for india to be happy these are um, uh, for want of any other word wily politicians uh, who have a, a, a sinhala chauvinist uh, core in their politics and uh, clearly they they, they are, are 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 people who who would on the face of it uh, have a lot of diplomacy there but it would make sense for india to be extremely extremely cautious uh, over the next few years till uh, 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 these brothers are uh, in power and of course they have the mandate uh, they have uh, a big mandate uh, to be there and it it does make sense uh, to be cautious uh, what helps us of course is that there is a lot of public opinion against a chinese uh, a, a, a domination on the economy or a chinese uh, uh, you know attempt at taking sovereign institutions and strategic uh, uh, ports for instance you know there, there's a lot of public outcry about that so that is something in a democracy that could keep them under check but you know the, the many times that i have gone and met uh, uh, gotabaya rajapakse when he was the defense secretary and i was a, a, a visiting journalist what i saw first was all the chinese military hardware models <laughs> that were kept on, on the on the conference room uh, that he had there so everything about the gotabaya rajapakse brothers of course india did play a role during the final stages of the civil war but so did pakistan they sent their pilots to uh, 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 to the area the chinese were very much active at that time we had a policy where we said that you know we will not help them militarily directly but in a in a defensive way there were other countries which went out there and helped them militarily which helped them in a much bigger way uh, in, in in defeating uh, or, or getting them the victory in the civil conflict that they had at that time okay points taken uh, i'm best i'm just going to come to you in a bit i saw uh, captain balsal shaking his head let me get a quick reaction from him and then i'll come to you go ahead captain balsal and nothing i just have a slight divergence of opinion and that i think i'd like to clarify i think anybody in sri lanka security forces realizes that while 
many other countries would have helped them win the civil war it was india which was critical and crucial in their victory as far as the civil war is concerned without indian cooperation that victory was unachievable and i think everybody in sri lanka understands the second point which i want to say is that gotabaya rajapaksha is not a typical politician unlike mahinda rajapaksha uh, gota of course is the president today uh, but he, he is not a typical politician he is a far more a blunt and a frank person than mahinda would be mahinda is of course far more uh, because he has been in politics for decades and knows the nuances very well so i think uh, doubting unnecessarily somebody's uh, utterances may not be prudent uh, to my mind i think uh, there were times of course there is no doubt after the civil war when we had uh, certain differences with the regime that time but i think uh, once bitten twice shy i think both the countries know that uh, it is in their interest to mutually cooperate and i think uh, Uh, the two countries need each other at this point of time so i feel whatever be the apprehensions i think the signs are good the signs are bright and i think both the sides have taken initiative to normalize the relations to make sure that the good relations continue between the two countries we were amongst the first prime minister modi was the first leader to uh, uh, congratulate him gotabaya was also first to come to india and now again the it is uh, all said and done to a very great extent the policies are made by officials uh, and i think uh, the selection of kolumbage as the foreign secretary is a very very right step uh, i think uh, and to that extent i think uh, i am optimistic uh, as far as the relations are concerned okay all right ambassador let's look ahead and let's look at uh, you know what is it that sri lanka and india really need to do going forward how do we build on the goodwill that we have built over the last 10 months or so you spoke about how you know we've extended a line of credit how we did the currency swap deal india has offered 50 million dollars to fight terrorism in sri lanka as well and you know as far as uh, intelligence gathering is concerned so what are the other areas of cooperation i think we've decided to engage more extensively and elaborately on education and health as well so what are the other sectors and how do you believe that we can take this uh, relationship up a notch well first of all let me state that i share the views expressed by captain alok pansal it is true that the rajapaksa family had taken a very hard line stand towards india earlier and in fact had appeared to be antithetical to our interests but then as the old saying goes there are no permanent friends there are no permanent enemies there are only permanent interests and i think both the rajapaksa brothers realize that a closer relationship with india is necessary for sri lanka's good and uh, in particular they are worried about the sort of dominance which the chinese tend to exercise when they have control over any strategic asset now the humban tota port is a strategic asset and the fact that the sri lankan foreign secretary categorically said that humpen tota was a mistake is something that shows that during our talks with the sri lankans we have been able to correctly convey our security concerns our strategic concerns and they share these and that is why significantly they have said that uh, sri lanka will adopt a posture of neutrality in its dealing with key powers at the regional and global level which means that they will not be doing the sort of thing which led to humban tota now where what is the way forward i think the way forward is for more areas of cooperation to be chalked out india is in position to help sri lanka in a variety of ways and i think that the government is actively engaged with the sri lankan side in this regard the particular areas which uh, need to be worked on are those which the two sides will have to mutually discuss it's not that we can uh, just dump something down on sri lanka i think they have to first specify what their needs are and we have to see to what extent we can be partners in this regard but certainly the path for economic cooperation between the two sides is very very clear india and sri lanka can do so much together in the areas of industry trade 
education, forestry development, environment, you name it. And uh, while there will be ups and downs, certainly, as there are indeed in any relationship between neighbors, but we should be prepared to go the extra mile to alleviate Sri Lanka's concerns, because let us not forget, we are a very large neighbor of theirs. They are tiny in comparison. And at the same time, they are being courted by other powers. The Chinese would go out of the way to befriend the Sri Lankans and do things which would be antithetical to our security and strategic interests. So keeping in mind our strategic interests, we should do whatever possible to benefit Sri Lanka because as a very large number, a very large uh, neighbor, we can easily do that. I think the two governments are engaged and I do not want to prejudge what the nature of this cooperation will be. Absolutely. All right. So Rajesh Sundaram, looking forward now, uh, what should our key focus areas be? What do India and Sri Lanka need to focus on, work on, say in the short term and in the long term? I think the immediate short term would be about the economy and uh, cooperation when it comes to the uh, the, the COVID-19 situation on how uh, Sri Lanka, of course, has had a, a lot of success in being able to limit uh, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the fatality rate as well as the infection uh, rate of, of the disease. But what it has not been able to mitigate is the kind of uh, impact that that has had on its economy, especially tourism is mainstay. Uh, so clearly, I think uh, cooperation in that and getting them out of this uh, uh, current crisis is, is something that they would be looking uh, uh, forward to. Also, I think India should engage with other strategic uh, uh, partners of Sri Lanka, like Japan, for instance, who also have similar uh, 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 interests as ours to <coughs> ensure that uh, the uh, the Chinese uh, in, in uh, lure for uh, for Sri Lanka is brought down as much as possible. I think there should be a, a, a joint strategy with the other uh, Sri Lankan partners uh, to ensure that uh, India's strategic interests are, are safeguarded. Because as of now, whatever messages have come from Sri Lanka doesn't really guarantee that uh, with China, and we know the intentions of China right now at, at the borders, uh, the kind of aggression with which India should go out there diplomatically to counter this in, in Sri Lanka, in countries like uh, in, in, the, in other countries in the neighborhood, isn't really coming through right now. There has to be a greater aggression uh, to uh, veer uh, Sri Lanka away uh, from the Chinese sphere of influence, as it were. So clearly, I think in helping Sri Lanka coming out of this economic crisis, the post-pandemic crisis, uh, would uh, go a long way in, in strengthening these bonds. Also, to work with other strategic partners uh, would be something which would be in India's uh, diplomatic interest as well. All right. Time to get uh, closing comments from all my panelists now with the best way forward. Alok Bansal, are there any areas of the relationship that need special, special attention, that needs to be trudged carefully? See, I have no doubts uh, that uh, the way forward is interesting. We have a lot of avenues, opportunities, and as I said, large number of Indians are willing to go to Sri Lanka. I think one factor which we need to look at it and which we need to do is, of course, uh, uh, as far as the uh, issues which we need to tread carefully, we have the issue of autonomy because 13th Amendment still remains on the statute. We would want it uh, that the genuine aspirations of the Tamil minority are met. Uh, however difficult they may be. Uh, but on the economic front, I have been advocating a bridge, land bridge between Talai Mannar and Dhanush Koti, which is extremely doable at much lesser cost than uh, the pathetic Setu Samudram project, which somebody brought in at some stage. Uh, and today, a large number of Indians want to visit Sri Lanka, a large number of Sri Lankans want to come to India. Uh, the bridge would pay for its cost within three years itself by the movement of goods and people. So that would be a big step if we could actually bring about uh, bring about greater uh, economic integration. We have actually, we have already power sharing agreements, etc. We need to have a common grid. We could have a grid connectivity, which we could probably go in. Once we have our land bridge, we could go in for grid connectivity. Other issues are there. Of course, Langa IOC 
uh, farm is there that uh, tank farm is there huge farm which is of course a issue which has remained for a very long time langa ioc has not been able to uh, utilize it or fully use it it's a big thing because at a time when india is looking at building up strategic reserves you have a huge reserve or which is available to us which has been granted to you by agreement we have not been able to utilize so these are the factors which we can take in and in fact as i said uh, otherwise uh, i feel in near future we will have very good relations uh, we need to collaborate and i think uh, collaboration has already started i think as far as pandemic is concerned indian army as you know had a Uh, webinar with Sri Lankan Medical Services, etc., where we try to uh, share our expertise as far as handling of pandemic is concerned. And I think uh, the next phase of uh, the collaboration will, of course, uh, be led by security forces and, of course, other uh, angles also. Economic development is there. Economic investments will go ahead. And as India grows, Sri Lanka would want to hitch on to the Indian bandwagon because. the first right. free trade area that we have signed actually was with sri lanka so whatever we do with sri lanka can be replicated with other neighbors in times to come absolutely and best the best way forward well the best way forward would be to keep adjusting our policy as per the needs of the situation one issue which could become thorny from time to time is the tamil autonomy question as captain bansal pointed out and this could raise its head both in indian domestic politics and in the situation in sri lanka so we will have to see how the two countries can manage this situation it is not going to be easy because the tamil question in sri lanka is extremely complicated but at the same time uh, i'm happy that the sri lankans have uh, shown sensitivity to our security and strategic concerns and they have said that in this regard sri lanka will always have an india first approach and they have categorically said that means sri lanka will not do anything harmful to india's security interest period now that is a very emphatic way of conveying that they are aware of our concerns they are sensitive to our concerns and i think in this background it should be possible to work closely together but as i said there could be danger there could be pitfalls and certainly the tamil issue is one the chinese uh, negative role in the entire region is another the pakistanis could be up to mischief too so there could be ups and downs but by and large i think the stage is set for the two governments to work closely together for the mutual benefit of one another Absolutely. All right, Rajesh Sundaram, close the show for us with your quick concluding remarks. Well, I think the the ethnic uh, Tamil issue is a issue which has been, uh, uh, you know, ha- has clearly fallen off uh, the agenda between India and Sri Lanka, and the Sri Lankans really don't care because after the full military victory, the legitimate political aspirations and and offering rights. to the tamil people has really fallen off the agenda for them and there is no great push from the indian side uh, for this a- as well so uh, i mean if you look at what has happened right now they have the northern provincial council which does not even have the rights uh, of a municipality in india points taken all right on that note then i'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us what's coming out of this discussion is India has carefully focused on improving ties with Sri Lanka and the Rajapaksha administration over the last 10 months India has extended a 400 million dollars line of credit more recently a 400 million dollars currency swap deal and also offered 50 million dollars to fight terrorism and for intelligence gathering meanwhile Sri Lanka is worried about China's interest in strategic installations and China's aggressive approach what we need to do going forward is to focus on industry trade economy education health and a host of other areas and we also need to work with other like minded strategic partners and help sri lanka in a time of economic turmoil with that it's a wrap see you again next time